Hi everyone, uh, in this video we will be solving example problems for the chapter limits and continuity. Uh, I think this is really the starting point for you to learn how to solve problems in this chapter. Till now we have been discussing basics about limits, continuity, indeterminate forms, formulas, uh, not defined infinity and all that. But from starting from now we will be going heavily into problem solving. Uh, and as in maths, I think in all the chapters I always emphasize that one of the things that you really need to understand is that you have to divide problems into categories and you have to learn approaches of how to approach a problem, how to think about a problem rather than just blindly solving it. Uh, so that is how I will approach this video and this uh, topic uh, is to divide problems into forms, into what kind of approaches you can do uh, and uh, specifically in this I will be touching upon three, three types of problems in limits and continuity. One is direct substitution which is the simplest type of problem in which basically you just directly substitute and you will get an answer. Uh, in factorization where you simplify through factorization and in rationalization where you simplify through rationalization. Uh, so without wasting any time let us directly go into problem solving and I hope that this video will be very important for very useful for you uh, in solving problems. Okay, so let's start by the first example. Uh, so limit x tends to 0, we have been asked to evaluate the limit x tends to 0, x, cu x cube minus 2 x minus 4 divided by x square minus 3x plus 2. Okay. Now we have been asked to evaluate the value, so the first thing we should do is direct substitution. And what do we mean by direct substitution is that we directly substitute the value of this into the expression and that is what we mean by direct substitution and we will always do this not always subs formally, we can very quickly also do it in our mind but we should always do this as a check of what are the values coming out and if you do if you do put limit x tends to 0 if you do put this here this will actually be 0 minus 0 minus 4 so minus 4 by 0 minus 0 plus 2 by 2 and the answer is minus 2 uh, and this is fine because you got a value which is minus 2 which is the finite value so hence the limit is minus 2. Uh, so this was I mean you might be thinking what is the point of this problem but this is an uh, this is basically an idea for you to understand that okay if we get a problem which the first thing we should do is directly substitute and it's quite important uh, and i will go into more details of how you should approach the problems but you should always always try direct substitution first okay so let us see another problem now this time we have limit x tends to 2 uh, x cube minus 2x minus 4 by x square minus 3x plus 2. Okay. So what is the first thing we should always do? The first thing we should do is direct substitution, direct substitution. So if we do direct substitution this time we what we find is that the answer is limit x tends to 2, 8 minus 4 minus 4, so it is 8 minus 4 minus 4 divide by 4 minus 6 plus 2 and this is nothing but approaching 0 by approaching 0 and hence this is an indeterminate form and here is where the knowledge that we had learned in past videos comes handy that whenever you see approaching 0 by approaching 0 this is an indeterminate form and you have to do something about to solve the limits and continuity problem. So what did what can we understand how can we solve this problem whenever you see some form like this there is no special formula that we have learned for something x cube by x square type thing. So how do we approach a problem like this? The way I would think and I think that should be, I hope that it, is, it will make sense to you is whenever you see something like this you should try to understand what is the reason that that is making this thing 0 by 0 form, Why? what is making thing approach to 0 and because x is approaching 2 basically there should be something. in the numerator that must be divisible by this factor and this is basically where the factorization approach comes in, the factorization approach comes in that there should be a factor of x minus 2 that must be creating this form of approaching 0 by approaching 0 in both numerator and denominator that is why both numerator and denominator tend to approach 0. So what if we divide both numerator and denominator by x minus 2 and then get another factor out here. Uh, so if we basically factorize this thing, x minus 2 is when we have taken it out, this should be x minus 1, I hope you can quickly see that and in the numerator 
uh, we will get x square uh, and then uh, you have to find the uh, coefficient x coefficient and this should be uh, x square plus 2x because you don't want any uh, coefficient for uh, so you I mean you, you can try to divide this thing basically if you do x square plus 2x then there x cube will come here minus 2x square plus 2x square so you are fine in terms of uh, x, the coefficient for x and now we have to find the coefficient of x as minus 2 so we have already created coefficient of minus 4x here uh, and then you have to adjust the constant uh, for for x so minus 4x plus 2 right plus 2 do we get the right answer we can check so we get x cube minus 2x square plus 2x square so that 2x square 2x square gets cancelled uh, minus 4x uh, plus 2x minus 2x and minus 4 okay so x square plus 2x plus 2 and this gets cancelled because this is not exactly 0 by exactly 0 this is approaching 0 by approaching 0 but these two will approach to 0 identically so you can cancel that out okay uh, and if you substitute the value now the answer is uh, 4 plus 4 plus 2 by 1 and the answer is approaching 10. So I hope that this you were able to understand the spirit behind the factorization. So whenever you see it's approaching by 0 by approaching 0 or some other form try to factorize and cancel out the terms which are actually creating the problem and in this case x minus 2 was doing the same thing. Uh, similarly let us now try to uh, solve another problem on the same lines and that is limit x tends to a x cube minus a cube divided by x minus a okay so first things if you get something like this directly substitute and now we don't need to i mean i'm writing it down here but with time i will not always be Uh, asking you to like uh, you can directly do it mentally but if you directly substitute uh, a q, x is equal to a you can clearly say that this is nothing but approaching 0 by approaching 0 problem now uh, can we factorize this uh, so first we have to realize what is causing the problem it is x minus a type term because when is it, whenever x is approaches a then the, it will make both numerator and denominator 0 so what you have to do is you have to take out x minus a uh, outside uh, and I think that should be pretty obvious for you that you can factorize the numerator denominator is already x minus a you can factorize the numerator using the formula that you probably have already seen many times uh, okay uh, so I mean what does this mean so if you have x cube minus a square x plus a square x uh, minus a cube uh, and then uh, even uh, minus uh, a square x and a x square gets cancelled yeah all right so if we if we have a problem like this then x mi x minus a is cancelled and the answer is 3 a square okay so this was again a factorization problem this was a factorization step So I hope you will be able. So now, whenever you see a problem, this is this will come with experience. That can you factorize? Can you not factorize? Uh, but I hope uh, that you are still able to understand the idea of how we can really uh, get these things. Out, okay. Okay. So now let us do more problems. Uh, let us do more problems. And the next problem is limit x tends to three. Root three x plus seven minus four. divided by root x plus 1 minus 2 okay uh, so if you get something like this root 3 x plus 7 minus 4 plus root x plus 1 minus 2 first thing directly substitute so I will just write directly substitute in short form and if you substitute it will be 9 plus 7 16 square root 4 minus 4 so approaching 0 by 3 plus 1 square root of 4 minus 2 so 2 minus 2 is approaching 0 okay now your square root uh, maybe you can factorize if you can think of factorization but I don't think there is any natural way to factorize 
however you see a square root minus something else uh, and that is a very classical way of telling you to rationalize things because you know that uh, root x minus a into root x plus a would be x minus a square so i hope you remember this trick which we is often done is x minus a square uh, and but why would you uh, why would you ever want to do something like this so i mean i'm saying that we can do rationalization but why what why will you ever want to do something like this so let us see what is really causing the problem uh, the problem basically is that there is a term which is 3 x plus 7 square root minus 4 which is sort of uh, becoming 0 so even if we square it if it if it becomes 3 x plus 7 minus 4 3 x plus 7 whole square minus 4 square this would, this would still be 4 square minus 4 square so that would not help in general if you think about it but if you clearly see uh, if we make it a square so this will become 3 x plus 7 minus 16 so this would actually become 3 x minus 9 similarly this would become x plus 1 minus 4 or x minus 3 so it will be 3 x minus 9 by x minus 3 and x minus 3 will get cancelled out which was sort of causing the problem so uh, i mean this may not be obvious so but and it is obvious that it will take time to you for you to practice so the idea is whenever you see root x minus a try factorization at which location you have to try factorization wherever you see square root so in this case we can sense that whenever we will factorize then we will get 3x minus 9 in the top and x minus 3 in the denominator so we have to factorize in both numerator and denominator uh, so we have to rationalize in both numerator and denominator so let us try rationalization uh, in both numerator and denominator because factorization was just not possible in this case so if we factorize this will become root 3 x plus 7 whole square minus 4 square root x plus 1 whole square minus 2 square divided by root 3 x plus 7 plus 4 into root x plus 1 plus 2 and limit x tends to 3 I hope that you are able to connect this through this that I have what I have done is I have taken uh, a square minus b square and then I have uh, divided by root a plus root b on both numerator and denominator uh, I hope that this is this makes sense and this would be uh, this would become 3 x minus 9 by x minus 3 into so this whole term becomes 3 and if you substitute the value this would be 2 plus 2 by 4 plus 4 uh, and this would be nothing but 3 by 2 so uh, I, I hope I it is I did not go to it through it too quickly but I think it should be familiar with you should be familiar with what I am doing I am rationalizing this by squaring this so I am writing this expression root x minus a as a x minus a whole x minus a whole square so this was root x so I am writing x uh, root 3 x plus 7 whole square and dividing by root x plus a here right so I am writing this as this and then that cancels out and then you can directly substitute and get the answer as 3 by 2 so you do direct substitution then you try factorization if factorization is obviously not possible you try rationalization if you see something like this okay so this was just a trick uh, for you to uh, understand all right let us do the last problem uh, for this topic uh, and that is limit extends to infinity limit extends to infinity root of x plus 2a into 2x plus a minus x root 2 so if you do direct substitution infinity into infinity square square root infinity minus infinity so this is infinity minus infinity type form and this is an indeterminate form we have already seen we cannot directly do factorization it is pretty clear that it is hard to do factorization in something like this but we can do rationalization because we do see root a minus root b form so 
let's just do it. Uh, let's do uh, factorization. So again, I'll write this as square of this. I will write this as x plus two a into two x plus a minus two x two x square divided by root of x plus two a into two x plus a. Okay, limit extends to infinity. Okay, so if we if we simplify this, this actually becomes two uh, x square would get cancelled out, and this would become two x five a x plus two a square divided by root of two x square two x square plus five a x. Plus two a square, right? Sorry, plus x root two. Got that factorized? There would also be plus x root two in the denominator here. So again, I've written x minus a square divided by root uh, x plus a, and then this would be. I hope this is clear here. This x root two. So now, how will we? Again, if you substitute now, a limit extends to infinity. This would become infinity by infinity form. Uh, and how do we solve a problem like this? Uh, and for here, we do we do use another trick. Uh, something that you should remember again limit and continuity chapters you will have to learn a lot of tricks is that whenever you see infinity by infinity form where you see a powers of x which are causing problem you divide by the highest power of the system and you divide both numerator and denominator by that so i'll quickly write it here that limit x tends to infinity will divide by the highest power so you'll make it 5a plus 2a square by x okay 5a plus 2a square by x divided by uh, so I'm dividing if I divide the entire numerator by x then x will get cancelled from here uh, and so this will become root uh, root of 2 plus 5a by x plus 2a square by x plus root 2. Five a plus two a square by x plus root two, and now when you substitute x equal to in infinity, this term vanishes, this term vanishes, and this term vanishes, and the answer is actually five a by two root two. So you get a finite answer for this limit. Uh, so this is the answer. So we did a lot of things here. So first we did this. We saw that this is infinity minus infinity form. It is not determinate. Then we factorized it using this formula that x minus a square uh, a square divided by uh, root x plus root a, and then we, when we simplified this, we still realized it's infinity by infinity form. But now we saw powers of x and powers of uh, smaller powers of x, so we divided by the highest power of x, which was one. So we divide both numerator and denominator by x, and we got the answer because we were able to make the terms finite, which were causing the problem, which was five a and two x square and x root two. These were the terms which were causing the Problems of infinity, so we were able to get rid of them by dividing by the highest power. So this is another trick that you should know about infinity type by infinity problems. So I hope you were able to understand problem solving of limits and continuity in this video, where we went through direct substitution, factorization, and rationalization. In the next video, we will be talking about different forms of limits and continuity problems, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you.